All right, so we call this meeting to order at 7.04 on election day, Tuesday, November 5th. And I think we're starting out with the October meeting minutes from John. Did everyone have a chance to look at those? Yep. Got them, yes. I have a correction. Shoot. Uh, Sandy Holder is actually Sandy Holder now. H O L D E N E R. Thank you. I was going to point that out. Oh, I missed okay. the misspelling. Thought I caught that. And I said, okay. I saw that myself. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Other than that, I think it's well done. Yes. So I moved to, to approve the minutes from October the 1st, 2024's meeting. I gave a uh, second. Hey, wait, I'm back on Sandy's name on my sheet. How do you spell it? H O L D E N E R. H O. It's correct at the top on the members list. Oh, it is? That's how I noticed. So I thought I corrected it, but maybe I didn't save after that. Okay, I was sitting there correcting it from there so on the, the new paper all right well then i'll leave it thank you all those in favor of Aye. approving the minutes Aye. from last month Aye. any opposed i can't see sandy so sandy you have to be vocal yes i'm sorry you can't see me no not yet not yet what do i need to do enable oh, video go. There you go. Can you see me now? There you are. Okay. Wow. I shook. I raised my hand. Yes. <laughs> All right. And the, yeah. nobody's opposed. So then motion passes unanimously. And the next item on our list. Treasurer's report. So Russell sent out all three of them. And did I miss those? Any... Did you miss them? I think I missed them. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure you them did. either. Unless he forgot to include the board and sent it to you directly. Did, did you get a copy? Just send them to me. Maybe. Oh. Yeah, I I I saw them. Oh, you did? You did. Yeah. Right. When do they come out? Do you do you know? So long ago. Let me let me um, scroll down and get to them. They're in my Summit Waller folder. I got nothing from the whole month from him mm -hmm. from a whole month ago. So I, can... I didn't get them. Yeah, no reply. Okay, uh, it says to me and to Larry. So maybe they just went to two of us for some reason. All right, I will forward them to the board. Huh. I went Larry, off the I'm Zoom. Larry, I'm sorry, you're going to have to get them twice. Or usually when I just put SWCA board members, it all comes up. But now it's not. Let me try to get a different one. So I'll just pin this as a an item to add to our discussion about the uh, email slash SharePoint document repository, why it's important to have everything in one spot so we don't have this mess every time. Yeah. Um, I have hard copies of those three. Pass them out. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I can't pay this out. I'm closest. I'll get him. I'll get him first. See you in a few minutes, Larry. I can tell. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Gabe, you said what? Oh, I was just joking that you're going to hand them out to me, and I'm closest. You're right. Uh, for September 30th, uh, there were no additions. Uh, there was a $600 check for Mid-County Community Center donation. The ending balance at the end of... Uh, of September was four thousand one hundred and fifty three dollars and thirty cents. So no additions that month. At September. August. No activity. At all. So the beginning balance of $4,753.30 is also the ending balance for August. Mm -hmm. And July, uh, there was an addition of $20 from the Callanan Cal family. Uh, that was the only addition for July. Twenty dollars. So basically, the last three months we have gained uh, twenty dollars, and wrote a check for six hundred yeah. to the community center. So our ending so we have balance is four thousand one hundred fifty-three thirty, right? Four thousand one hundred fifty-three dollars thirty cents is correct. Yes. So two changes, one addition, one small addition, one big subtraction. Yes. $20 addition, $600 subtraction. Didn't we already do May and June a long time ago? I don't have my minutes up. I have to look. Last month, I crossed them out as if we didn't need them. Okay, I have June's. You... I mean, as far as uh, approving them already. Oh, I think we did approve. Yeah, June. I think we already yeah. did May and June. We did cross out May and June. So we needed July, August, September. And that's what he sent us. Yeah. That's what we just did was July, okay, August. Okay, July, September. August, September. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, based on what Larry said, I'll move that we approve them. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor of approving them financials for those three months okay any opposed nope unanimous passes moving on anything for our website and social media that is worth sharing you can't hear me you can't hear gabe but you can't hear gabe right I can't hear me. I guess I, I hit space bar an accident. Sorry. Uh, so uh, we are not seeing any extra traffic on the website. It's a little bit down. And uh, as far as the Facebook group, we are at uh, 1,992 1 members now total, which is you know, slowly, steadily increasing. And uh, the engagement out of those people is about 1,200 active members over the last two months. So we're at about 64. And was that 68%? I think is what the math adds up to 65% engagement for the people that are actually members of that. So that's pretty good engagement, I would, I would say. But nothing new has happened. We haven't put anything out that's going to cause some attention to raise those numbers any much higher than they are. But that's it from, for that. Okay. Then did I, I, I don't really, we, we left off asking sandy and sheila if either one of them had a really strong desire to move to a permanent position and i don't I think we gave some think time and wait time and i haven't heard from either of you i heard i remember you saying you were fine either way and i don't i don't know if that's still true or not yes i'd like to become a full-time member i just wanted to give sheila the opportunity as well so all right so then 
traditionally, Larry, when we have two people who are coming on board at the same time and both have a desire to be a full-time board member, how has the board handled that in the past? Can't go well, alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, there's nothing in the bylaws that addresses that particular situation. And if my memory serves me correctly, we have never had that situation arise in the past. Okay. Well, Sheila's, Sheila's <laughs> not here. I don't know if she's just out uh, because uh, she's gone. No, she she's at an she election. She's at an election party. Oh, I see. And she'd never been it, to one before, and she was excited to be invited. Okay. Uh, Jen, did uh, Sheila, before her election party uh, and before this meeting, indicate to you whether she wanted to be a full-time member? I think both Sandy and Sheila would like to be a full-time member. So. At the last meeting, well, Sheila said she was going to speak with her family. That's correct. She did say mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So I haven't heard back since then on that point. Because we're I shy think. of full full members and also um, only one of the two prospects are here. Uh, do we want to table this till next meeting? I think so. So, for, I mean, I, we did forget the formality of having Sandy promoted to a voting member for this meeting for quorum. Right. Mm, we did and forget that game. I I actually just didn't know that little thing. So. Uh, how, however, we had five. We have five regular members. That's all we need for a quorum because there's nine members all together. That's right. a majority. Five is a majority. So we didn't need to have Sandy elevated to a voting member at this meeting. Oh, that's good to know. Thanks, Larry. However, however the president has discretion in these kinds of things. So, if uh, the president wants to say to elevate uh, Sandy to a voting member for this meeting that's I think entirely up to her. Well the president has noted that Sandy has already voted twice so it just makes sense to elevate her to a voting member for this meeting to all make right. things all easier across the board at this point. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Now I, uh, I would comment that that yeah. Sheila has not gotten back to you, uh, Jen. She's had a whole month to make her choice, talk to her family, get back to you um, <clears throat> about her decision as to whether she wants to be a full-fledged member. Sandy is here tonight. And it's kind of what I was thinking, too. Yeah. Has indicated that she's ready to move into a of uh, a permanent position, I think that's up to the, the president to decide whether to table this uh, uh, this uh, issue until next month or uh, proceed with elevating Sandy to a permanent position this meeting. I'm going to hold off because Sheila has contacted me on a couple other little things going on and and did ask to be excused from this meeting so it doesn't quite seem the right thing to do to go that route and i don't know i mean if we have to draw straws or pick a number between a hundred one and a hundred i'm not quite sure what <laughs> we will choose to do but it will be something that's fair and impartial So let's it it seems to in. me that you want to delay this till December. I do. I do. All right. Well, I think we should abide by what the what the, the feelings of the president on this matter. Works for me. How good? do you feel about that, Sandy? Well, that's fine with me. Yes. I think it should be a full board decision. Mm -hmm. Vice President. I agree. I, I, I think we can wait till next month. Okay. So then 
North Waller has had some really loud noises lately that have Point sounded. of order. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, we're we out of order. skipped we skipped A and B, a new business. We did? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. New business. Consensus. Oh, I'm so sorry. Consensus discussion. <clears throat> I really don't want to do that. I think I, well, I don't, it's up to the board, but it feels like we have a very small number tonight and it, it feels weird to talk about it over Zoom for some reason. I don't know why. You know, this this issue is uh, very important to uh, Sheila. She's not here. And I think uh, discussing this topic uh, would be better served if we wait till she's at our next meeting. Anyone else disagree? Can we table this one? Mm hmm Okay, yep. I'd like to have more people here to discuss it and possibly even, I don't know, possibly even wait till our in-person, but that'll be up to the board again. So let's just table it for now if no one has an objection and then we'll bring it back up next month. And you can have some time to decide if you want to do that in uh, e session or open session. Right. I think e session sounds good. All right. So then email address, a budget, and the budget, the email address, budget, and decision. So Russell and Gabe sent back and forth communications. Were we all copied on that? No, just uh, you, Angela, and myself were involved with that with Reed. So uh, I was actually very surprised to see our uh, total income, annual income, was about a thousand, um, and total expenses being um, thirteen hundred, with uh, Russell actually being the, the the shoring up of the additional funds out of his own pocket, basically like website stuff is what I understand. But we're running at a deficit, so a couple of things. Um, One is I, I I have web space that I actually pay for already. It costs nothing for me at all to just simply add it to my hosting. If we're paying for that, or Russell's paying for that out of pocket, I have no problem putting it on my own web hosting platform, and that's fine. Um, that does not help the email and the SharePoint, which is still the same expense we're talking about. The actual cost is $720 per year if we have all board members. Right now we're shy, so we only have 11, so that's, you know, 70 or $60 less per, per year, but we are still looking at running a deficit. So if we're negative 364 and we're donating 600, it doesn't seem fiscally responsible. That's what I'm, I was surprised that we had this budget and nobody even knows what the budget is. It seems irresponsible to give $600 out in a donation form if we can't even fulfill the, the budget. as is we could change yeah i the knew newsletter that to an online format and that would save all that money it would save that for sure um and also it might be time since it ha when's the last time the the annual um the annual renewal has been raised in price has it ever gone up Uh, maybe one time from 15 to 20 dollars i think but that was some time ago several years ago So it might be time, I mean, even if it's just a modest $5 increase from 15 and 20 to 20 and 25, that might help with some of those things. So we can make sure we can keep up with the cost of ensuring that we are staying current with technology and also just the efforts that we want to be able to, to do and maintaining a war chest for filings that we need to make for the, on the benefit of the community and whatnot for those things we've done in the past. I don't want to see us going into a hole. We, we have a good war chest now, um, but that's going to get bled away at this rate pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, a couple things to consider. Uh, if we raise the uh, membership, annual membership donation, 
to $25, then I'm assuming that uh, senior citizens would go from 15 to 20. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And, I was just uh, shifting it. Yeah. And then uh, uh, another thing to consider, um, we we don't utilize the uh, community center as much as we did previously, and we're donating six hundred dollars a year to the community center. They're happy to get that. Um, we might consider dropping that to maybe four hundred to help with our budget budgetary issues. Something to consider. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the we reason use it why for we because we use it five times well, a year, basically. Five yeah. or six, depending upon our needs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fifty bucks a time. Yeah, but that's that's pretty cheap. <laughs> that is cheap. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it to reduce that part if we can find some other ways to increasing funds and limiting other things. Um, uh, the other number that he had given me was, uh, I don't know if it's super accurate. He was just doing it off the top of his head, but he said we only have about, uh, what, so a thousand dollars if that's coming in, we're talking. Yeah. That's what he said. 40 to 60 people are paying, depending upon if they're senior versus uh, non-senior um, renewals. Mm -hmm. um, that means we're a significant portion of that just on the board alone. I don't think we're doing a very good job. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm really bad about social media type of posting and drumming up support for things. But maybe we need to do a regular push for, hey, do you know what? We do all these things and here's what that money goes to if you could support us it's only $25 a year and helps us out. and then we just list off the type of things that we do as a organization to help the community just so we can make sure that we can afford those things that help us stay effective yeah i think uh i think that we need to um educate the uh, citizens of the summer wall area periodically you know, because they're probably asking, what does this group do for me? And what does it do for our community? I know we have a list of, of uh, things we've done in the past. It's a long list. We've done a lot um, in uh, since 1993. So, yeah, I, I think maybe a, a posting uh, maybe on our Facebook page or some of the things we've accomplished for the community would be helpful to justify the $25 a year member donation membership. Yeah. Our Facebook, we have, like I said, we have about just shy of 2000 people on there. If we could get a, just a quarter of those people to be supporting members, it'd be far better off for us as far as yeah. you know, having the money to be able to do what we need to do and also be able to build up a, like I said, a war chest for you know, actions we have to take as a organization that require fees and whatnot to be filed with the, the county or the courts. At the last couple annual meetings, I don't require, I, I don't recall there being much discussion about membership fees either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just as people walked in, as they signed in, but it wasn't really any sort of a push. Yeah, when I tried to pay last time, whoever was working at the table didn't even know what to do with the money. So. Oh. Got to look grassroots. I think, I think the, uh, the back in 2022, Gabe, was about the last time we posted on dues, and that's when we offered an online payment method. Mm -hmm. So it might be worth us kind of redoing that again um so knowing how it works with um people doing donations and running things on the web if we cancel the subscription of the people that are already doing the annual renewal because it's automatic we will lose those people if we don't somehow reach out to them and get it back up so i'd be worried about attrition as far as the people that currently are committed mm -hmm. but you know, trying to communicate to those people, make sure that they are knowing that, hey, we're re raising it and you have to click here and renew it. And hopefully you don't have too much of that loss as uh, going forward. Hopefully we can gain in a bunch of new more to make up for any of that might happen. 
Or you can grandfather in the existing ones at the old rate for a year or two type of thing. So we don't lose those while we get the new ones on. Because we can get at least 100 or 200 people that will easily handle everything we're talking about getting done. Well, that's a good selling point too. Renew now before our rates go up type of yeah. a thing. We're looking at raising rates, our, our oh, membership yeah. dues. Yeah, I so, don't know if $5 makes much difference. It yeah. does to some people. Does it? Usually, they're if it makes yeah. that much difference, they're not going to do it at all. I think is what it comes down to. Five bucks makes a difference per year. I don't yeah, know. yeah. At this point, thirty years ago, sure. Well, or there's the if you haven't paid your twenty twenty four dues. Well, twenty twenty four is almost done. I don't know. Just put it on your calendar to pay your 2025 dues for Summit Waller community. And here are some of the ways that this committee serves you, this board serves you, and our community. I don't know, something like that. To needs to be there. short and snappy. It can't be a long list of all things right. with a huge description. Right. Yeah, I think if I look back in our Facebook post back in 2016, I posted like a short one basically saying, your yearly dues support the following and it was just like a quick little paragraph but that was before we had the online payment availability as well so we could i could like massage kind of re-massage that um previous post um, and i can email it out to you guys and you can take a look at it and let me know if it's too long or too short and we can go from there yeah that'd be great okay i'll do that yeah, that was before that was before even I moved into the area. In January sixth of twenty sixteen is when I when I did that one. So um I you may will need add, to add that to our calendar to do it on a more regular basis, maybe every six months or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean or quarterly honestly, even. If all we're getting is a thousand dollars in dues every year, then and we're spending more than that, then yeah, we need to do a little bit more than just in our annual newsletter. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to put that on my Outlook calendar as a reminder. I will revise the um, post about dues and I'll send that out. Thank for you. you all to, for all, for all, you all to review before we post it. Yeah, Perfect. we're about 200 to $240 worth of uh, the actual annual income we're getting for for us is the board mm. that, that's about nice. 20 20 25 percent yeah Angela, <laughs> yeah obviously you're aware that you may not post without all board approval from everyone <laughs> census <laughs> or full approval <laughs> we can full approve approval by email since we haven't figured out consensus yet <laughs> Well, that's a good point. Yeah, as long, if it's not just something about the Facebook group in and of itself, or an event that's being happening, uh, something about the board. Yeah, I, I, I get that too. Yeah, I to will. Fairly. I will do that. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, I hold hold this uh, to what we just said. Yeah. yeah. All right. But that, other we... than that, that's all it comes down to is the budget and. Being able to get that done, we don't really have the funds unless it's funded from some other place. Well, we have the war chest, as you say, so we can get started with making those changes. But we'll be at a major, major. deficit, though, at that point. Going from negative 364 to over $1,000 negative per year at that point. But we have 4000 in the bank account. Yeah. Right. We have and a buffer, point, for sure. And if we... If we're voting to take off the newsletter, it'll almost balance just by that. Okay. So the, oh. the question is, do we need to make a decision tonight to move forward with that? Or, or I mean, we already decided, really. Didn't we already vote on that? If my memory is serving correct, that this is something we wanted to do? I don't think then, so. No, we didn't vote on it. We talked about it, though. Mm -hmm. Docked, moving digital only with the newsletter 
Oh, my note says oh. that we would vote on it this month. Yeah, the other one was that we also needed a list of how many email addresses we have for the current um, list of people that were getting the newsletter. I know some of those people probably never gave us an email address because it was prior to email being a thing. That's how long we've been around. <laughs> so if they never gave us an email, we're going to miss those people and we won't capture them. Uh, and we will, we'll, unfortunately, if we can do a cheaper card that gets sent, hi, you know, this year we were doing digital, put a QR code on there, much cheaper production. I know very scaled back just so people don't get lost entirely. I mean, Which we're talking we about people that don't give out email addresses, which probably means they're not even really much in the digital world and QR code won't do them much good, but at least they've been notified that they need to check it out. I do have much do we pay each year? Oh, who was talking? Uh, Angela, how how many how much do we spend on the newsletter each year? Last year, Russell said it was uh, just shy of uh, five hundred fifty bucks. Okay. Okay. I have I do have a great many uh, email addresses that we never and we never send anything out to those email addresses. We've been very respectful of not bombarding people that way. Uh, but I do have them and we could let people know those the people whose addresses we have that we would do a online newsletter this year and that the information would be for the annual meeting would be posted online that everything will be and then if you we wanted to do a postcard just telling when our annual meeting is we could look into seeing if that's less expensive and then after that we i don't know we it might we be the last year from, we, yeah we yeah. start moving away from that and seeing that everything's digitalized Unless we have one or two exceptions, and then we'll ju we would just have to specially handle those two, those couple exceptions. You're talking about the Mailchimp um, email email campaigns that we've done before. The thing I'm is that where the list saying... is because we have that list already. If we need to add to it from a list you have, and make sure there's no duplicates or because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that people that said don't email us again don't ever get emailed again, and that email Mailchimp actually did that for us. Okay. People people click the unsubscribe, don't email me again, and we, those were people people flagged for not emailing again in the system. Was that one with the PDF newsletter that they got flagged that way? Yeah, I don't think yeah. I have that list. No, it's not. We didn't actually have a list. It's actually stored on the the Mailchimp service. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. We can extra we can export that if we need to, but again, we just need to make sure that we're very good about honoring the unsubscribes and mm -hmm. leave me alone people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll look into seeing how much a postcard would cost so that we have that information before our, our annual meeting and newsletter and all that is due in 2025 and see if we can maybe just get that information out to everyone and then move from there onto digital. So yeah, I imagine it'd be a lot that. cheaper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking I, yeah, that it would be, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be. Mm -hmm. So then nobody's left unattended, you know, they are not on the, the, computer so much that they're at least no it's not coming so that they're yeah. forewarned that yeah. they have they have to look for it elsewhere almost everyone is on a computer or a phone you would think so but there's a, a lot of people that still aren't i work with a lot of people that are just barely using technology and mm. and it, it tends to be the older demographic it just doesn't stay connected that way and that's just the way they are <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm sorry, but as uh, my older demographics are always showing pictures and videos of their grandkids doing everything. So yeah, <laughs> there's also a newer generation of younger people that just kind of eschewed wanting to do any more digital. It's they've been overwhelmed with it, and mm -hmm. they don't they avoid it entirely. They don't do Facebook anymore. They might do TikTok and Instagram because they're quick little 
dopamine hits, but they're not staying involved online forums and stuff like that like they used to. Anyways, that's the last I have to say about it. If anybody has questions, let me know or other comments. I guess it's the bell-shaped curve. There's going to be some on either side that you're not going to get no matter how hard you try. So you're aiming for that bell shape in the middle. If you're only looking at, you know, two or three dozen people that want paper copies, I'm happy to print them and mail them myself yeah. as well. So, yeah, I think we can do that. <clears throat> So are we take we're not taking any action right now then. Uh, we did agree in the last meeting that we would be voting on this. So the question is are we voting on it or are we waiting an additional month? I don't see a reason to wait if you don't mind dipping into the the funds we have on hand. We all agreed it was important enough and that with the plan was to do it. We just were going to make it official with a vote. And now it seems like we've got a new plan into starting to wean off the newsletter. So that funding would um, balance itself out. This would take that place. I don't know that replacing a newsletter with a postcard is going to like be a fraction of the cost. No, I don't think so. I, I don't know that it's going to be, you know, like a hundred dollars. It, it's, it's still going to be, it's all the postage that you really is. And the setup to then now we have a setup fee for the postcard and that sort of thing. So it could be comparable in price this next year. Then the next following year might be a little bit cheaper um, to print the postcards, but I don't know that's going to be enough savings for us to afford the emails and the online storage. Unless we do that in conjunction with raising the dues. And so I guess, I guess the math needs to be done and to see what that would look like. I personally, I'm not, uh, I'll admit I'm not savvy enough to do that kind of math in my brain on the, on the spot. So I'd be curious to know, what that would look like before, yeah, before, before yeah, we'd we'll be committing to a, a, a dump into our, our, our savings essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I then committing to it every, after that, after, it's 720 a year, no matter what, after that, it would be a little bit less right. since we're only at 11 right now, but. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, hundred people at $5, that's $500. Yeah. But John, I said I've priced business postcards that are already pre, um, pre done. All you do is insert your own information, mm -hmm. you know, and and they're still expensive because it's like Angela said, it's um, driven by um, a lot of it's by postage. So yeah. Plus, do people read them after getting inundated? <laughs> Our logo is a very big, prominent thing, so they know it's not just some general spam. At least we'll be out of the election cycle to where it's not confused with the influx we've been getting lately for that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I was going to say, I guess what I'm saying is I'd like to wait to vote until we kind of have a better sense of what that long term budget would look like, because if we're going to be dipping into the savings every year, then that savings is eventually going to run out. So I think um, I'd, I'd like a better sense of what raising the dues, lowering the cost, potentially lowering the cost of the postcard would be long-term what that would look like if that would change our income at all to where we could afford the extra 720 every year or if we all agree that we could just spend down our savings and spend 720 dollars a year on the the emails but i just i don't think that's sustainable either i don't know i'm kind I of like go ahead i i would like to interject that uh if we're going to raise the dues to $25, $20 and $25, 
Um, we need to do it next month for sure because we're talking about the beginning of 2025, January. Mm -hmm. That we could vote on tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want to just do that now? I'll make a motion. We raise the dues by $5 for each membership. Okay, the motion is that we raise the dues by $5 for membership. So that would make a single $20 and a family $25, correct? It was senior 20 and and uh, family 25. Oh, not individuals, just a senior? Yeah, it's senior, it's senior and family or individual, okay. yeah. Okay. Is there a second for that? Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to raise our dues by $5 for the upcoming year, 2025. Do we have um, all in favor? Okay, so motion passes unanimously. Dues will be upped for this upcoming year. That, that would be a supporting membership. It's really a donation membership. I thought of something else. We could make all board members pay $70. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, I'm out. See you guys $70 later. dollar board member fee. <laughs> it was a joke. I'm an alternate now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, now we've solved the problem with Sandy and Sheila. I'll step down, yeah. Board membership uh, will cost you $50. There you go. <laughs> for you. Yeah, it's, it's not the first positions that were bought in politics. <laughs> all of you are independently, all of us are independently wealthy. We can afford $50 a year. No, Gabe. <laughs> all right. Where are we at? Looks like area concerns and monitoring. So again, yeah, so no action tonight on the other. Correct. Before we move on. Okay, got it. Correct. Okay. Uh, A, there's, I don't think any, none of the rest of you live. Wait, Sandy, I don't know where you live. Are 104th you and Vickery. Where? 104th and Vickery. Okay. So down here, I'm I'm at 46 and Waller. So 48 heading down, I'm not quite sure to 30th. And this, just in this general area of North Waller, we've been hearing periodic, it sounds like gunshots. There's been a couple that have freaked me out. I, um, I don't know. Uh, and then Sheila called and She's called a couple times saying she's calling 911. She hears gunshots. I've heard other neighbors mention it here and there um, on Facebook or whatnot. What are these noises or what's going on? I called Marty and Marty says it could be fireworks. And he was going to uh, call the, the Tacoma police and, and see if there's been reports filed and whatnot. And he checked in, or Sabrina checked in today and said they haven't heard back yet. So uh, Salishan is, or has had a lot of problems with gang violence this past year. And so I think the concern is that um, it's impacting our neighborhood. It, it, if it is gunshots, maybe it's just fireworks. Where's the sound coming from in relation to where I you are? I've never been a ground gun, so when I hear a loud, sharp noise, that's what I think it is, but I, I don't necessarily know for sure. And uh, that's what Sheila heard, and that's what neighbors neighbors are confused too, because that's what they'll say online. They'll say, what's going on, or are you hearing these, or um, I bet nobody has a definite answer. What direction are they coming from since you're north on Waller further than I am in the area. Oh, what direction I is the sound no coming from south, north, east from you or west of you? I I can't tell. Oh, okay. I mean, a lot of times I'm upstairs and I only hear it if my windows are open. So I my windows south, but that doesn't always mean anything. 
over the last couple of weeks, there have been additional fireworks, it sounds like, coming from the uh, area of the Faith Dairy property area. I don't know if that's where it's coming from. Uh, don't quote me on that. But from where I sit, our dogs start barking at them. They are coming from that general direction, which is west of 44th Avenue East. And generally along the same line as 72nd Avenue. The other thing, too, is I know that there are vehicles that have a wonderful sound on it when they it, it literally sounds like gunshots. And I mean, I watched one drive by one day and it scared the bejesus out of me. It, And as I listened to it and the further away it got, it, I mean, it sounded like they were firing gunshots as they were driving down the street, but it was their vehicle. And, you know, on Facebook at one point, people, oh gosh, I heard gunshots. I'm like, and they, you know, described the exact same time of day and street. And I'm like, no, it, it was a car. And so I think between those fireworks and real guns, it's really hard to tell, um, So. That, that when a vehicle does that, it's it's because it has a rev limiter on it, so it can max it out, and without blowing their engine, it just automatically does it. So it kind of has a almost a backfire pop, 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 pop. Yeah, and yeah. it does sound very much like a semi-automatic. Uh, yeah, we hear, uh, we you know because I can hear the noise from five twelve from my house, so you can hear them on the freeway all the time. You know, it's it's quite common. I'm I'm to the point where I'm used to it now, so I'm like, eh, it's not a big deal, but. it's hard to know the difference between those and fireworks and real gunshots too. So they are both small explosions. So yeah. Yeah. And if it is gunshots, uh, which periodically it is, because I, I find some shell casings around Orange Gate or streets around Orange Gate occasionally. I, I just know that people are just going by and shooting into the woods or they're shooting up in the air. Yeah. Just, just, uh, what they would consider kind of a fun activity to do. But by the time you call the sheriff's department, they're long gone. I mean, mm, sure. Sure. I guess that, I guess what I was thinking is could, could whatever is going on at Salishan be impacting us? Um, but yeah. I think Angela has a good point. If, I mean, we do have a lot of traffic that races up and down Waller. It could just be that. We hear it quite regularly going up and down 104th Street and then Wall Road area and 512. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that's exactly what it is. Yeah, right at my in my spot, just my own experience, uh, it's kind of straight and flat and people pass all the time, right? I just stand out getting the mail and I see people passing. Somebody, somebody's going 42 and somebody wants to go 55. And <laughs> past two cars at one time uh, uh, yesterday. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's go to B. Don is not here. He wanted to talk about developing a... What? Compute? Oh, I'm sorry. The Tums? You want the Tums? Okay, can can you give me a couple minutes and I'll come help you? I've got a boy with the flu. Sorry. I lost my Don wanted to talk about developing a civilian emergency response program in the area and he had some thoughts and things to share, but he called around 6.30 and said that he, he didn't know if he was going to be able to make it into the meeting or not based on some personal things going on. So I guess we'll just I table guess. that. Since he's not yeah. here, we'll table that for next month as well. John, and is that all right? Sounds good. Yeah, I did see him post a question about looking for somebody that might be cert trained mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. on the Facebook group. Um, but I didn't see much activity from that, though. Mm -hmm. Right. He wrote a little bit more in the email, but it was basically that. It, um, and he would elaborate on his ideas. We'll just save it. It's not going anywhere. Uh, yeah. And if he does pop in before the end of the meeting, he can jump in on it. Have we heard anything 
I haven't heard anything from Dan. Has, has anyone else? No. For letter C? The short plot. I'm pretty sure that he's sent that. Um... We sent the letter a long time ago, but we haven't had a response or an update from the county or, or mm. anything because he's the point person on it. Yeah, he hasn't said anything to me. I don't know. Larry, has Nothing he said to anything me, to I... you? Mm. Okay, well, then we'll just keep moving along. Is there anything Can you new get... on D? Can you guys remind me what the address was for that? And while we're chatting, I'll see if there's any new stuff on the code enforcement side of things. Okay. You guys remember? You remember? You recall? Ooh. 5507 Waller Road. Thank you. Do you need the parcel number? No. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm Okay, so EFG, I've got nothing. Does anyone else have anything? What about D? You, you started to mention D. But, I did, uh, but then Angela went on a, a looky-loo for anything about C, and so <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Yeah, Sheila, so Sheila and Angela brought that up, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let, let me see. It was rerouting us. Could the Pierce County comp plan, let's see, there is, um, just got an email, let's see, the next one is, it just came through, hold, please hold. Yeah, I think I got that email too. I get like county notices and then I get like I'm signed up as a citizen notice. So then I'm trying to figure out which like where I saw that. Uh, uh excuse me. Yeah. Here it is. The final council hearing for proposal, so it's ordinance 2024-559, which is uh, Pierce County Comprehensive Plan incorporating Pierce County's 2024 Comprehensive Plan periodic update. I'm doing a couple of other things. Um, is set for December 3rd at 3 p.m. And it is hybrid, so you can attend remotely via Zoom. Was a, so it went to committee yesterday, and then the full council will go to will be December 3rd. And I can forward this to you all so you have it. It has lot it has live links in the it has live links in there so you can click on everything. Do that. Um, Sheila might have more details, but I, I ha honestly haven't been following it too closely, but um, that's what I've got. Sorry, not much detail. We can't hear you, Jen. I know we probably all get those same emails 
that Angela gets. Has anyone looked through, or is there anything else on the on that? I haven't read mine. I've gotten some, and I just haven't had the time to sit and peruse them or click on links or anything else. I don't get them. I don't think. I find them difficult to read. Amen. Yeah, they're it's not. Hard. It's not user it's friendly. Reason, yeah, it's not a quick read, so. I, no. My eyes kind of glaze over going, oh, I really need to like sit and concentrate on this and and I don't mm -hmm. have the time for that. It's almost by design. So uh, the general public doesn't understand it. Mm -hmm. They just kind of stop paying attention to it so they can do what they want. Uh, it, it's it's so detailed and you have to look up every single thing because you have no idea what they reference that's written in language, almost like legalese. So it, it's frustrating to read them because I get lost so often and. I'm not stupid, but um, it makes me feel stupid. <laughs> a lot of their, uh, I mean, you mean the uh, messages that are in, about the comp plan or the comp plan itself? The, it's a They're comp both. plan, which you're trying to get into the weeds of it, trying to actually understand really what it says. It's like, oh, I, it's I, hard. I, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy now. Yeah, a, a, a self um, a, 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 a epidectomy is easier, I think. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Root canal. Did you, did you want to go back to C then? And was there anything, Angela, on C? For 5507? Uh, it looks like the last entry for the zoning violation. It says that the on November 1st, a follow-up initial contact letter was mailed. So let's see what that letter says. Um, it was from Sean Decker, the code enforcement officer, to the property owner, and it says... Um, the complaint on this case, the complainant, complainant on this case reported seeing moving trucks related to your moving and storage business, unloading large storage containers and storing them in large shops that were recently constructed on the property. If that is in fact what is occurring, moving and storage is not a permitted land use in a rural separator, and I would be more than happy to fall to allow you reasonable time to make alternative arrangements. If this land use is not occurring, would you be willing to allow me to have a look inside of the shops to verify so that I may close the case unfounded? Looking forward to hearing more from you soon. So looks like November 1st, that was the latest um, correspondence to the property owner to indeed confirm that they are or are not doing moving in storage. So we'll find out more. Okay. We wait and see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I I don't. I uh, let's see. Sabrina contacted me today and said that nothing has moved as far as the traffic. We had which. Let me go get her exact words. She sent it. Sent it this afternoon. Let's see. Nope, that wasn't it. Sorry, just takes me a moment to. That's okay. I don't have my mouse, so I'm using my finger, and it's not as easy as the mouse. But that's why you're jumping around for us. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I uh, said that it was under Waller Road Curve and Vickery Corridor Traffic Safety Issue Update, an ordinance of the Pierce County Council related to the reduction of the maximum speed limit on 64th Street East in the Mid-County Community Plan Area and amending Exhibit A to Ordinance Number 2018-48S under staff review, not on docket officially yet. That was the only update. 
for that. Uh, and then I drove recently to move to move to letter G. I drove down 64th between McKinley. Has anyone else gone down there lately? Between McKinley and Portland? They have started, it's all blocked off to traffic. They have started. Yeah, oh, I've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 64. Uh huh. From west, west, of, of west of Portland. Portland yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's under it. I'm looking forward to seeing that done. That'll be so nice. And then we'll be yeah. next, right? Um, not quite our, I mean, from the pipeline trail on the Tacoma side, that will be next. But what letter G is referring to is from the pipeline trail on the county side, from the pipe um, east of that to the Waller Road, we'd like to see some sort of safe access to the pipeline trail. We discussed that, I don't know, last year maybe? It was quite a mm, while ago. Yeah. But we'll have to figure out how to start campaigning for that. I know that Marty was talking about potentially trying to coordinate with the city of Tacoma. So rather than it stopping at the city limits, yeah. it could go all the way to Waller Road, which yeah. makes sense. Um, but that's easier said than done. So I think, um, I don't think that that between Orange, uh, between the pipeline trail and Waller Road is on the six year transportation improvement plan for Pierce County. So I'd have to get added to that, which is is doable. Um, but it would, I think, with Marty leaving his position as um, council person and moving to assessor treasurer, if he wins that election, that'll be for the next person, for the next council person to um, shepherd and lead. So we'll have to get them up to speed on that. Does he have to vacate his current position for next year preemptively to run for that? Okay. Yeah. So if he doesn't win the that that spot, then he, he's effectively given up the council position. I no. think so. No, I yeah, think I think so. so. Oh, because he can't run for it now and get elected to it. So somebody else well, would have been in their, elected in their place, yeah. right? I think if he loses, District he Five loses. wasn't up for for an election this year. Oh, it wasn't. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. That, no, that's what I was well, confused on. No, but if he vacates his position, then the party re you know nominates a. Oh, they have, they have to wait one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure how that worked in that instance. Um, yeah, that's how Paul Herrera got into his position when, um, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, was it Hans? No, Hans Iger when he it left. Was Hans Iger. I mean, he vacated the position, so then the party nominated a replacement. And they 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 picked Paul Herrera. So this would be similar if Marty is accepts the assessor treasurer then they would likely okay i didn't i didn't know um, if they had to say okay in order to run i have to say i'm i'm done within the next year no matter what you know so i don't know if that means he can resume it if he doesn't win the the spot in the election or if he does then he does if he doesn't win treasurer or, or i mean assessor treasurer assessor. does he then well, he doesn't get to stay well, a council member right i think he yeah, does he would just stay he a council member because his position was not for his election I didn't know if that was a, th a thing he can hold both positions or not. That's why I was I was curious how that works. You can do both, you can do both but okay. I don't know how you would. Anyway, I don't, you can't do both. Okay. The same thing. Yeah. Okay. That, that that's why I I was pretty sure you couldn't do both, but I you know I don't know. I just know I've seen his name on signs further away from our area than I've ever seen him before, going out towards like Allen and uh, Kit Kitsap. I guess that's over there. But um, so just just on the side of the the back to the pipeline trail thing or uh, access it's it's it is heartening to know that they got from wherever it ends on the on the city limits line all the way to 72nd street on the pipeline trail which means a lot of coordination between county and city to make those yes. both happen that it's doable on 64th just to waller it's not that far it's actually a shorter distance so hopefully that's something they can pull it off could, together it could be 
could be expensive because you have the uh, bridging of uh, Swan Creek. If you're going to oh, do, yeah, that's going yeah. that's going to be the the holdup. I think that happens. Yeah. Yeah, then you go into a lot more money. Yeah, any water crossing. As, yeah. Of course, Marty Campbell's concerned because his district position was not up for election this year. Um, if he loses, he just continues in his position as uh, Pierce County Councilman. Okay. If he wins, then he has to give up his Pierce County Council position. Mm -hmm. And then the Democratic Party will uh, submit uh, what, three names yes. to, to the Pierce County Council or yeah. to um, Pierce County Executive, I'm trying to remember which one or both, to replace him. Yeah. So just so you guys know, Don joined. I don't know if he's he, he's muted and not in camera right now. So we don't see or hear you, Don, if you want to speak up. Did we forget the Orange Gate update? I don't we didn't forget it. I didn't know if there was one. Well, it's okay. just it's just uh, uh, the only thing I can say about that is uh, work continues and it will continue into 2025 to finish the trailhead facilities and and the trail through Orange Gate Park to the east gate of uh, Orange Gate Park. And so I would just uh, say if you're interested, you should uh, go to Pierce County Parks and Recreation website and and uh, look at the latest updates for Orange Gate Park and Pipeline Trail. Working good so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don, are you with us? Don? Probably waving his arms and talking all sorts of stuff and yeah. we can't hear. Cannot see, see cannot hear. <laughs> yeah, you're muted and on no video. I don't have my phone here either. I would call him. Sorry. I did. I did uh, hit the little ask to unmute and ask to start video, so it should pop up on his screen mm -hmm. to prompt him. So he's not responding to either of those requests. Okay. Well, let's um, keep. Madam President, let's keep going. Oh, yes, Larry. Um, I'm going to have to uh, leave the meeting uh, as I get ready to go to bed because I got to get up really early tomorrow, catch a flight. All right. So, was before you leave. Was there any news or announcements for number six that anyone has, especially Larry, since he's got to pop out of here? If Larry doesn't have anything, I have just a small update. I've actually added to my calendar to update the website for the new dues um, effective date on the website on um, in mid-December. So okay. that would be ready for the new year. Yeah. Larry, you don't have anything? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I heard my computer ding for a moment and I was hoping it was Don, but it it was not. All right. He's with us in spirit. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling bad right now though. What time is it? Does anyone have the time? 813. 813. I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. And now Don is gone. All right. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Okay. Meeting adjourned at, oh, I can see my clock now, 8.13.